What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. A couple weeks ago I did a video on this uh, Lulzbot Taz 6 uh, 3D printer. I can zoom out a bit here, yeah. And I've been printing up a storm since then. Now at that time I told you that I was working on a, another business plan, something to uh, to try to get into the the rapid prototyping, 3D printing type business and this was kind of an experiment. So I've been printing everything I can think of, everything I can get my hands on. I've been experimenting with different types of filament and so forth. And so uh, what I wanted to show you today as I've kind of learned as I've, as I've gone, I wanted to show you kind of what I've found thus far works and does not work uh, with, with this type of a printer. This is a, obviously a desktop unit. It's not enclosed. So um, you know, it's it's fairly expensive for for a desktop unit. It was over two thousand dollars, but um, it's not like it's a production unit. So there are some limitations. So what I've found, you probably won't be able to recognize what this is. Um, this is actually like a Warhammer uh, figure that I downloaded from Thingiverse. Um, and and you can't recognize it because um, it has support material on it. And what I mean by that is, you see these this part over here that's kind of uh, porous looking, as opposed to this part over here which is more finished looking. That is because this is support material. What happens is, if I printed it like this, which I did, the printer starts at the bottom and lays down material and goes up in slices like this. So what happens is when there's a part like this that sticks out to the side and has no layers below it, what the printer will have to do is build up some material below it to support that structure. And that's called support material. And what you have to do when you're finished with a print like this, this print took about 13 hours, 14 hours to print. And afterward, you got to spend a little bit of time removing that material. And it's it's attached, so you're going to have to, what I'm going to do is use a Dremel to remove that material. Um, sometimes you can use an X-Acto knife if it's small enough, but this is fairly substantial amount of support material to the, to the uh, effect that you can't even tell really what it is. So a couple other things that I've learned. Um, you can print, this is a Game Boy, uh, a Pie Girl case, if you've heard of that. Basically it's a kind of a new age Game Boy that you can, that you can make. Um, this was actually printed on a production level machine. I went to demo it uh, at, a, um, at a business here in, in the Dallas area and they printed this out for me. So uh, comparing that to my version that I printed out, There's not a ton ton of differences, as you can see. Um, this is my version with my printer here. This is the $200,000 machine that printed out this side, right here. So a little bit better detail, but as far as quality-wise and durability-wise, there's no difference. And there wasn't much of a time difference either. This one took about an hour and a half to print and I think this was about two hours to print. So they are faster but not like radically faster. And there's not as many artifacts on the on this side from the like production level one. There's not as many imperfections and blemishes. So that will be critical you know if and when I get to the point where I need to to produce these for end user products. But I was really surprised that how good the the home units will will operate compared to the production ones. The technology is not perfect yet, even on the the production side of things, and so um, the the market has a little ways to go on that. But uh, but this is obviously a little better. Uh, the other thing, this is. Um, the, the final thing that I wanted to cover is the difference between a good design and a bad design. This is a uh, obviously a piece that was printed. This is um, 
that Lulzbot, it was a design that Lulzbot sends with the, the printer that you, you print out for your first print. And so, I mean, they spent a lot of time perfecting this and it's, it's good. There's no real artifacts, there's no uh, major problems. And this was printed without support material. So, so this is pretty good. They don't get a whole lot better than this. This was not printed on high detail settings either. This was just printed on regular settings. So, so it, there's, and I'll show you an example of one that was not designed well. This was uh, supposed to be like a wristband, kind of like a watch. Um, let's see if my camera can zoom. So obviously lots of artifacts, lots of imperfections in this as it printed out. Um, the, the slicer did not do a great job of, and, and it just wasn't designed super well. And uh, it did not print, it was supposed to print without support material, but it didn't. Um, I don't know why. Uh, it, I, I stopped it at this point. Um, anyway, so something like this uh, is, is not, what, what I'm trying to say is that the, the part of the quality difference that you're going to find in, in things that are 3D printed is going to be on the design end of things. You really need a quality engineer or quality person with an eye for detail and that's got some experience. Um, you can really tell something that's kind of amateurish versus something that was kind of professionally designed and and done on the front end in the software before you go to hardware to print it out. So anyway, just a couple things. Um, there's also a lot of tips and tricks. You'll see over here I've got cotton balls and alcohol and that uh, little container over there is full of a, a 10 to 1 mixture of wood glue to water or water to wood glue actually, 10 parts water to one part wood glue. And that's what you have to do. You, there's tips and tricks between the different filaments on how to prepare the bed on a printer like this. Um, to, what you have to do, and I, I failed on this a couple times, but if your model doesn't adhere to the surface, it will move slightly as the, the head goes back and forth printing. And what you end up with, let me see if I can grab an example, um, I don't have one right this second, but what happens is it moves and so the print head thinks it's still there in the same position and will start laying down little stringy pieces of filament and it just doesn't look right. It's, it's a complete mess and you have to kind of stop it and start over again. So what you have to do is for PLA, like this material, you put down uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol on there to kind of get every bit of oil and, and stuff off of there so that you've got a nice, pristine, clean surface. But that's not enough for ABS and some other materials. You actually have to put a thin layer of, of glue down to get it to adhere. And then obviously you just pop it off afterward and clean up the bed surface. So anyway, just a couple tips and tricks that I've learned thus far, some limitations, some some positive things, some some you know things to, to watch out for, some hurdles that you'll run into. But that's kind of after two or three weeks, that's kind of what I've learned thus far, guys. And I do intend to make 3D printing videos in the future. Uh, I've kind of put the business side of things on hold a little bit because I've got another something in the works so I'm not gonna go ahead and start that channel like I mentioned right right just yet but I, I do intend to do a few more 3d printing videos in the future so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching